Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys, welcome back to my channel Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in Minnesota in a zone 4B. So it is mid-May 2023. I think I'm going to start by just kind of taking you around the yard and just kind of showing you some highlights, what's blooming right now. We have some lupin I want to show you that is just gorgeous right now. We have creeping phlox. I have a lotus moon pearl bush. It's a really unique shrub. You don't see it too often. It's blooming right now white, so I want to show you that. And also just behind me are my lilacs that are just starting to bloom. And actually these lilacs are just on their fifth year and I got them when they were only a foot tall, a single stem for 75 cents each. And as you can see, they're, some of them are about five foot tall, as tall as me. Um, I got those from our county. Always check with your county and your city because sometimes you can get some really good deals. Our, our county had um, really good deals to buy in bulk, some shrubs, some trees, and our city had really good deals to buy trees. Uh, every resident was allowed two and they're about half the price. So I just put in two um, Honeycrisp apple trees, which I'll show you back there. Now Honeycrisp apple trees need a pollinator, so we also put in a small Fuji apple tree and I'll show you in the back. So let me show you around a bit and then after that I'm going to show with you some seeds I'm going to plant this year and where my cut flower garden is going to be. I'm going to do a cut flower garden slash veggie garden this year. It's just going to be um, super low maintenance, not very formal, not fenced in. Um, so I'll show you that. Stay tuned. If you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe, it would really help me out. Okay, you guys, let me just show you a few highlights in the yard right now. The Minnesota strain red bud. I just want you to get one more look at this because it's almost about to leaf out and I don't want to miss it. Let me get closer here so you can really see the buds. I love this tree. Isn't that gorgeous? See at the tips, it's just starting to leaf out there. I highly recommend this tree. It's really easy. It just needs a little bit of shade from the afternoon sun. But other than that, very easy. And even after it leaves out, it's a really pretty tree. So that's a red bud. And I'm just getting ready to plant up my annual containers next week. I still have a lot more plants to buy, but here's just a little sneak peek of what's to come. So I'll come out with that video next Friday. Can't wait. Let me show you my side yard here. This is just a narrow side yard. It goes to my neighbor's chain link fence there. On the right is kind of like a succulent sedum miniature evergreen rock garden it's got some really bright gold scotch moss too i love scotch moss it's a great ground cover but here's this ruby red semper vivum i just planted it this season and it is really eye-catching in this area so i just wanted to show that still need to do a little bit of spring cleaning up let me show you on the other side of this garden path here though there's a couple plants blooming. Just next to this yarrow is some pink creeping phlox. This is a great spring bloomer. It's just kind of fizzling out on the side there, but very pretty nonetheless. And this is its first year, so it will spread. And check this out. This is what I really wanted to show you guys. This is a lupin. There's actually two plants right next to each other, but isn't this stunning? I love lupins. They're just so cool to look at. Not only the blooms, but the leaf structure looks really cool too. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Ugh. When I passed it up at the garden center, I had to have it. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I love, love, love lupins. Spring bloomers there. And it'll be really pretty just in front of these hydrangeas I have planted. So let me take you further down here on the garden path. This is just about to bloom here. This is just a donkey tail spurge. And we have a Delmara ice plant back here. Actually, the petals aren't even open all the way right now, but it's very pretty. 
Then we have the Carmen Semper Vivum. And we just have everything waking up over here. That's a sweet Kate Tritoscanthia. That's gold. All these hostas are new. They're just coming in, just waking up. Hosta Liberty really is eye-catching when it comes out. This is my first spring with it. but And check out this gold Ajuga. I love it. The gold and the purple together are amazing. This is Cordial, or Cordial Canary. This is its second year, so it spread a bit, but yeah, it's a gorgeous ground cover. Spring blooming. Highly recommend that plant. There's some creeping Jenny next to it. And a, one more clump there. And just next to that, I believe I have some Burgundy Glow Ajuga. It's just about to open up the flowers, so you'll see that probably next week or two. Everything's waking up on this side. We're just in mid-May here, so everything emerging is just gorgeous, though. Check out this hosta, Montana Ario Marginata. This one's a really pretty one when it emerges as well. Huge leaves on that. Second year for this plant, so, but it gets big. Rainforest Sunrise, one of my faves. First year for this plant. And Ben Vernoy, I just planted this a couple weeks ago. Isn't it pretty? The creamy variegation on it. This is humpback whale. This is chocolate chip ajuga. This is darker, but when this opens, it looks like electric blue, purple. It's very pretty. And let me just take you on a walk to the back of the property here. This is a new bed from last year. We just put it in. We had a ton of clearance plants. But check out this one that's blooming right now, Lotus Moon Pearl Bush. Have you guys ever seen one before? It's supposed to get six feet tall, but this is its second year. Hopefully it gets, you know, fills out more, gets blooms all over, but it looks like these little pearls before the flowers open. So I'm guessing that's why they call it Pearl Bush, but isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, I'm hoping next year or the year after it'll start flowering over the whole entire plant so we'll see but I'm really happy with this plant it was one of the first shrubs I put in back here last year last spring I think I got it for like $20 at Menards it's a first editions got some nine barks I'm gonna show you this garden glow dogwood it just is really eye-catching when I'm looking out the window from the house it has red twigs and it really does just brighten up the area back here. It just glows. I love it. Highly recommend this plant. And just next to it, these were my $5 clearance plants. Snowball Bush by Burnham's. I have four back here. They're not fully open yet, but they're about to. So I'll show you guys that. Well, probably next week it'll be open. Back through the garden path I put in last year. Just showing you. I just planted three trees back here. So... We have two Honeycrisp apple trees and a Fuji apple tree. So Honeycrisp there on the left, the two, and the Fuji is on the right. Honeycrisp apple trees were actually developed, genetically engineered at the University of Minnesota here. So the Fuji apple is a pollinator for those two. Just a little bench back here. This is a work in progress back here. <laughs> and here's my common lilacs that I got for 75 cents each, like five years ago. These are just opening here, so they're not in their full glory, but they're pretty darn close to it. So, it smells amazing. A great hedge, easy plant. Of course, now, you know, they make the continuous blooming lilacs that are really nice, too. Here's another one here. I can't wait till this hedge fills in. Just gorgeous. All right, let me just show you a couple. That we have a single daffodil here. <laughs> I planted a few, but only one flowered. It just doesn't get very much sun over here. But very pretty nonetheless. <laughs> and then. On the left here, those are white petticoat daffodils. Those are supposed to be eight inches tall. They didn't really get there, but hopefully next year they're new. 
Let me show you this great spring bloomer, Columbine. I'll try to show you the petals on this. The, the blooms are just gorgeous, aren't they? Sorry, I'm trying to hold the uh, camera at the same time and it's a little difficult, but I love this plant. It blooms for weeks. It's a great spring bloomer. Highly recommend it. And it's doing okay in between these three maples, which is usually a really hard place to grow. And we got some bleeding hearts next to that. This is kind of a dinky plant because, again, because of the maples and it doesn't get much water. Maples have such shallow roots, it just kind of sucks all the water out. Here's the front bed. It is coming along. These prairie fire crab apple trees are just about to explode. They're just starting to open. Let me give you guys a closer look. Gosh, in another couple days, these are going to be amazing. I'll try to get a clip and show you next week. So yeah, crab apples, they're just amazing in the spring. It didn't flower as much last year because of a drought, but it's doing much better this year. I watered a lot last year. Very happy with those. And let me just kind of show you a couple things in this bed. We have alliums popping up all over the place. We got a little more creeping flux there, halfway open. It's not in its full glory yet, but it will be soon. All these are atlas alliums. They're getting really close. Hopefully next week I could show you guys these. First year because I just planted these in the fall, so I cannot wait. See, it's just about to open. Very excited. We also have some globe masters planted in here. We got some purple sensation. Those are globe masters right there. We also have shorter Ostara alliums, so show you guys those soon. This is a new plant. I love it. An Artemisia Valerie Finis. This is supposed to get yellow flowers in the summer. More alliums. These are Silver Mound Artemisias. We're going past another allium. Those are Millennium alliums that are in front. We got some daffodils here, Talia daffodils that are just fizzling out. I actually have a Baptisia that's emerging in between all of those daffodils. And check out the creeping Jenny in the back. Gorgeous. And this is an early bird columbine. I'm normally not a big red color person, but I love these blooms. They are gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? So that was this week. I hope you guys like that, and I'll show you more next week. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, what I'm gonna be doing now is just kind of showing you what I'm gonna do with my cut flower garden. Um, as you might know from my last video, we were gonna do an extensive garden there that was fully fenced in with a very tall fence because we have a lot of deer and rabbit pressure in, we're just adjacent to the wetlands here. Um, but we decided to hold off on that for a couple years and just do something a little easier this year. Um, so I came up with this plan of kind of um, lining the bed with some cut flowers, a couple rows of cut flowers, and then just a few um, veggie plants in the back here. So what I'll do is I'll do some mounds of veggies. I'll kind of show you what those are and some kohlrabi I'm gonna put right there. Um, but let me kind of show you the seeds that I got so you could see here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to line the bed with this purple atomic gumfrina. Take a look at how gorgeous that is. So all of these seeds I did get from Baker Creek heirloom seeds. Now I got the idea for this type of gumfrina from a channel called Hooked and Rooted. She did this to part of her front bed and it was gorgeous. So we'll see how that goes. I got like three packs, so I'll kind of line the bed and the path going in with this purple atomic gumfrina. 
so we'll see how that goes okay so i'm also going to be planting some of this amaranth it's just gorgeous i've seen it in another person's garden and i just really wanted to try it out it might take to the end of the season to bloom but that's just fine with me uh, you can direct sow all these so i'm really excited we have this kind right here you can see it's called dreadlocks i think that would be just really fun to have and then this kind I'm the most excited about this is called love lies bleeding so as you can see it's just gorgeous kind of just like drapes if I could find another um, picture I'll insert it here um, but I'm really excited about that and I can't wait to try this is my first time direct sowing flower seeds so we'll see all right and so i'm going to be planting four varieties of zinnia zinnia are supposed to be a really easy flower that you can direct sow so we'll try this out and see how it goes look at these varieties i got though so pretty this one's called mazurkia it is just gorgeous it's like a scarlet petal with like a cream tip and it has gold in the center another one here this is like a salmon color. This is called Xenia Pink Senorita. If you could see that there. It just really just caught my eye. Really, I was just going through the catalog and just seeing, you know, which ones I like. I tend to lean towards more like pinks and purples and whites uh, instead of like the warmer colors. So here's another one here. This is called Queen Lime Red. So it almost looks like a dahlia. It's got ruby tones with apple green. Really excited about that. And then last but not least, we have polar bear. These are supposed to get really big. This look kind of like a dahlia as well. All right, so those are the flowers I'm gonna be planting. And let me just show you a couple of veggies. Now, the veggies I'm gonna be planting are ones that I've planted before without a fence, and I didn't have a whole lot of issues with animals um, eating them, so we'll see how this goes. So there's two varieties of um, cucumber that I'm gonna be planting. We have Pick a Bushel Hybrid, and we have Burpless Beauty. So I'll kinda of just do some mounds of those in the back or in like the center back of the bed and I'm not gonna trellis them or anything, I'm just gonna let them go. Uh, this is just, like I said, it's just supposed to be easy. I don't wanna spend too much time or money on this project, so we'll see what that looks like. Another one I'm gonna be planting here is just this small fancy mix of gourds. Now gourds will take all the way to the, to the end of the season, like in fall to harvest, but I thought this would be just nice. There's a lot of space back there. These require a good amount of space to spread out. And I thought I would just kind of, um, you could see there, I'll just like decorate my front porch and maybe give some to my neighbors for the fall season. So, I, you know, another thing I've always wanted to do with gourds is kind of grow them up a, a arch trellis that you could walk through. I always thought that would be really cool, but maybe one day in the future. Okay, I should probably say too, these are all vegetables that I like to eat also, so they'll get a good amount of use. I don't have a big family, um, but I can give some to my neighbors. So anyways, the next one here is summer squash. I'll just do a mound of a couple plants of those. Those are always good on the grill. Another summer squash or zucchini. This one's Black Beauty. So this will get another mound with a couple plants in there. And last but not least, this is my favorite vegetable to plant. And I'm going to do a succession planting where every week for about three weeks, I'll plant a few more. And this is kohlrabi. If you guys haven't had kohlrabi, it is kind of cross between a potato and a turnip, but it's lower in carbs. It's not super starchy. Um, it's good just cut up raw with some salt and pepper, or you could dip it in some ranch, or you could even cut it up and throw it in a vegetable soup. So kohlrabi is my last vegetable I'm gonna plant. So let me just take you in back here. Let me just kind of show you where I'm gonna be planting everything. And we'll just go from there. All right, so I wanna give you guys an idea here of where I'll be planting. Now I have a formal bed to the right. The veggie and cut flower garden will be where all the dead leaves are. 
we kind of just put our dead leaves there every fall to kind of just build up the soil there. And just in front of that is a more formal bed as well. Um, so, so this will kind of be the path here. And then we'll do, we'll line this with gomfrina and the gomfrina will go all the way on the back side of this bed and on the front side of this bed. And then here we're gonna have the four rows of zinnia. We'll have the amaranth just behind the gomfrina right here. And then back here is where we'll have like the five mounds of vegetables. Okay, so I hope you guys like that video. I will put out another one next week. I'm going to be doing some summer containers. I can't wait to show you those. So happy gardening, everyone.